A huge top-level white tiger chained in mage chains without a single chance to move. The spellcaster, single-handedly holding this monster back, shouts to his comrades to hurry up. This is their only chance. If they kill it, they can win first place. But all their efforts were in vain. Suddenly a man burst onto the battlefield whom they could not have opposed under any circumstances. He always wondered if life was a game. And he's the one in it who's always the center of attention. This guy was capable of single-handedly destroying a top rank monster. His name was the best warrior of the north, Zhao Han. The young man sliced his opponent in half with a single blow, leaving no chance for the other groups to be rewarded for defeating this boss. The players watching this noticed that Han's fighting skills were getting better each time. It's too bad this is the last time they'll see him. The doctor said he wouldn't live for a week. It's over. Goodbye. Wonderful yet disgusting world. Zhao Han walked to the edge of the roof. He could no longer bear the unbearable pain and despair. At that moment, he got a text message on his phone. An invitation to the game. But unfortunately, he can't get in anymore. Swallowing fearfully. The guy looks down and realizes that he doesn't want to part with his life. He can't make up his mind, but he has no choice. Either the young man dies in the throes of a terrible disease or he can end it all right now, quickly and painlessly. Looking up, Han begins to hear strange noises. Looking at the evening city, the guy notices that the buildings around him start to float in his eyes. A bar with the percentage of loading appeared in the space. The terrified guy, starting to shake with fear, doesn't realize what's going on. But at that moment his weakened legs give out, and he slips off the edge of the roof, flying down. Han realized he didn't mean it, not like this. While his inevitable death draws near as he falls, the buildings and space around him are torn apart. What the hell? Hallucinations before death. Is this really what's happening? Could it be rebirth? After he said it out loud, the boy collapsed to the ground. A cloud of dust and dirt rose up around him, blocking out everything that had happened to his body. The only thing Han realized was that he was in terrible pain. As he looked at his hand, the young man realized that he was not dead for some reason. He saw a huge piece of metal stuck in the ground in front of him and looked at his reflection in it. Why did I turn into a tiger? Han shouted hysterically. As he examines his body, the boy tries to figure out if he's not dead. Maybe his soul has been transferred to the game. Zing. Error system activated. A window appeared in front of Han, telling him not to panic. The system explained that he was not dead but had been transferred to the destruction contract game. It was the so-called error system, which had gotten out of control, that had brought him to this world. If the host doesn't believe it, the system suggests he look around. The game has merged with the real world. Everyone has their own purpose in the game, according to their skills. Not understanding how this happened, Han asks why the hell he's a white tiger, if he's supposed to be a pumped-up swordsman. The error system explains to the host that it's because he opened an extra bonus. She wonders if the guy is feeling energized. He is only level 1, but his dexterity skill at this level is an order of magnitude higher than the other players. After scratching the back of his head, Han realized that it seemed to be true. His current body was much better than his old one. It sounds ridiculous, but the young man is delighted. Laughing happily, he admits that God is very merciful to have given him a second life. And this time, he would be able to dishonor his past life by winning glory with blood. At that moment, thunder rang out high in the sky. The very next second, the white tiger was struck by lightning, frying it to the bone. As the charred hand stares dumbfoundedly into the void, the system apologizes for forgetting to remind him that the game is triggering self-control, which will constantly strike him with lightning. Grabbing the system window floating in the air, the enraged guy, screaming, asks why he's only talking about this now, and what should he do if he doesn't want to die from lightning. The system explains to him that there are only two ways to avoid being struck by lightning. The first is to find a mage and make a contract with him. The second is to become a human player again. But it's not clear how exactly that can be done. Looking up into the sky, Han realizes that it seems to be too late to look for a mage. At the same moment, a thunderstorm broke out and a stream of high voltage current headed towards the guy. Damn it, is he going to die immediately after being reborn? While he was thinking about it, a bolt of lightning reached him and blasted the nearby area. However, in some incomprehensible way, in the next second, 
Han found himself in a forest of tall trees, checking his body. The guy tries to figure out if he's dead, maybe reborn again. At that moment, the system alerted that it had to use up all its energy to save him. Now it needs a break. When the befuddled looks of some monsters appeared from behind the trees, the system told the host that he had to rely on himself now. As soon as Han noticed them, the first level hyenas immediately came out from behind their hiding places, clutching his head. The guy is hysterical, asking the system why she moved him here. It could have moved him somewhere safe. In response, the system explains that it had no time to think, so it had to act quickly. Without giving him any more time to think, the hyenas immediately pounced on him. Realizing that he has nowhere to run, Han grabs the hilt of his blade and decides to fight and test his strength at the same time. Fortunately, he's good at swordsmanship, so level 1 mobs are no problem. Come on, attack, shouted the boy, snatching a weapon from behind his back. But looking at what he had in his hand, the young man was dumbfounded to notice that the blade had disappeared somewhere, and now he was only holding the hilt. When he looked back, he noticed that one of the monsters was already attacking him from the back. The tiger dodged his opponent's blow with a single leap, leaned against the tree behind him, and slipped the dagger back into its sheath. Deception, deception all around. The equipment also leaves much to be desired. The very next second, he leaped back toward the hyena, grabbing a sheathed hilt from behind his back. Han swung the improvised weapon. He would like to report a serious fraud by the gaming company to the police. Immediately after saying that, he struck the monster with a powerful series of blows, knocking it back several meters. Unable to withstand such crushing attacks with the scabbard on its muzzle, the hyena died. After a few minutes, the guy was already standing on the mountain of dead monsters, majestically holding his improvised sword in his hand. After that fierce battle, thanks to the accelerated agility boost, his level instantly rose to level 5. While he was flaunting his newfound stats and level in front of him, he heard the rustling of bushes not far away. With a frantic glance in that direction, Han realized that he hadn't seen the boss of this low-level location yet. He must be hiding somewhere, swinging his scabbard. The guy snapped out of his seat, hoping that defeating the boss would definitely bear its bountiful fruits. I will not spare you, shouted the white tiger jumping several meters up and bringing his weapon above his head. In fact, it turns out to be no boss at all. Clutching a staff, a crying pink-haired girl asks for help. Flying up to her, Han doesn't realize what the girl is doing in the forest. Realizing he can't stop, the guy yells at her to get out of the way faster, but it was too late. The white tiger flew at full speed into the girl standing alone in the forest. He knocked her to the ground and they crashed into a tree together. When he realized what had happened, Han felt his muzzle hit something soft. Opening his eyes he saw large boomboxes in front of him. Noticing this, Han immediately fearfully recoiled a short distance away. Turning away, the guy coughed awkwardly. Shaking his head in embarrassment, the young man asks her if she is alright. The frightened girl, thinking he's about to eat her, apologizes, shouting that she didn't mean to follow him. The system alerts Han that this girl is a strong level 5 mage. Sitting on her knees, the spellcaster explains to the tiger that she is only here to make a contract with the beast. She doesn't want to hurt it, and asks the guy not to kill her. Gathering his thoughts, the young man can't believe that she really wants to make a contract with him. At that moment, the system informs Hanyu that a new mission has started. The goal is to make a contract with a mage within one minute. As a reward, he will be given a bronze experience card that will allow him to jump to level 10 immediately. He saw a great opportunity in this. All he has to do is sign a contract. Not only will he be able to get the reward for completing the mission, but he will also avoid being struck by lightning. It's like killing two birds with one stone. Determined to show his best self to gain her trust, Han struck a cute pose purred and said that he was just a free beast. At the same second, the monster pounced on the defenseless, frightened girl and decided to take a closer look at her gorgeous boomboxes. Like a gentleman taking her hand, the guy asked her why she should not contract with him. However, from the mage girl's side, it looked as if this maddened beast was ravenously looking at her palm, telling her how white and tender the meat was. Laughing, he says creepily that she's going to be his lunch today. In fact, he is sniffing the girl in fascination, begging her to be his mistress. In his head, 
Han is thinking what a good actor he is. He's also fluffy and handsome. The boy is sure that she definitely likes him. In the next instant, the young man receives a savory slap from the pink-haired girl, flying a short distance away. Running away from him, the frightened magician asks for help, screaming that she is being attacked by a dangerous tiger. Looking at her, Han can't understand why she didn't like his cute and fluffy body. What do we do? It looks like she's not going to be so easy to win her favor. Nothing to do. The guy decides to resort to drastic measures. Taking the hilt out of its sheath, Han stabbed the sharp part into his leg with all his might. The white tiger immediately screamed in pain, trying to get the attention of the fleeing girl. Grabbing his wounded leg and rolling on the ground, the boy yelled that if even some handsome mage wanted to tame him, there was no way he would be able to fight back. Hesitantly holding onto the staff, the pink-haired girl realizes that this is a good opportunity to catch the tiger demon. Turning away, Han smiles slyly, satisfied that she had fallen for his ruse after all. The very next second, the mage creates a spell, beginning to make a contract with the spirit beast. The system alerted the enchanted Han, who was shackled in blooming fetters, that the contract conclusion was successful. All of the master's skills were increased by five units. When the tiger gratefully hugged his new mistress, the system informed him that this girl's name was Gao Dawen. Before it disappeared, the window congratulated Han on successfully completing the mission and gave him a bronze experience card as a reward. While his mistress jumps happily behind him, shouting that she finally has a spirit beast, Han looks at his profile contentedly. He did it. However, the price was quite high, even having to injure himself. Running up to him, Dawin crouched down beside him, carefully leading the staff near his wound, the girl asks the boy to stay still, so she can heal him. As soon as she started casting the spell, the wound on the white tiger's leg instantly healed. Han stands up abruptly and jumps in place, noticing that it's as if the wound never happened. Dawin explains that his wound was shallow, so he will be able to recover very quickly. Once the contract is signed, they can familiarize themselves with each other's information. It's a rather strange feeling for the guy that he's not alone now. At that moment the landlady called out to him. She said they had to go to a place. When Han asked her what she was talking about, the girl said that they were going to the ancestral temple dungeon. The thing is, her best friend is missing in the dungeon, and she wants to find her so she needed a spirit animal. A worried Dawin can't even imagine how she's holding up down there. The boy approaches her and tells her that since it is about the Temple of Charon, she has come to the right place. The boy assures the girl that with him she is guaranteed to find her friend. Han tells the surprised hostess that he was first place on the server for a reason. When Dawin asks him what he means by first place and server, he says it's nothing and tells her not to worry about it. Some time later at the Temple of Charon, a group of people are preparing to go inside. The red-haired guy with the spear remarks that it's amazing that the game is so incredible and almost indistinguishable from reality. The partner standing next to him agrees. If it weren't for his personal experience, he would never have believed it. While they were saying this, the doors of Charon's temple began to slowly open. A girl from their squad announced that the gate was about to open. According to the rules, only five people could enter. She was originally going to invite another friend, but he abruptly changed his mind, so they were short a person. A man with a huge two-handed sword behind his back, calling the red-haired guy Zhang'an, remarked that he was the one who had organized this trek. He wondered what they would do next. Approaching them, Dawen asks if she can join them. She is also very eager to go to the dungeon. A surprised archer from the squad asks what a level 5 mage is doing here. The bearded man explains that her level is too low to join their team. They accept level 8 or higher. Holding out his hand to her, the lanceman says it's no big deal. There aren't enough men anyway. The system immediately asked the girl if she wanted to join Lun Junhin's group. Accepting the invitation, the mage thanked them for the opportunity. Looking at his new teammates, Han notices that they are all level 8 and 9 and much higher than him. But he's just starting out. He hasn't shown all his abilities yet, and he'll be better than them. At the same moment, the gates of the Temple of Charon completely open the passage inside. Walking in, 
The squad leader shouts to his comrades to do their best to protect the newcomers and keep them from getting killed. Once inside, the surprised members of the squad began to look around at their surroundings. So this is the Temple of Charon. It looks spectacular. What are those statues? They look like game sculptures. A mage, a mad warrior, a soothsayer, a knight. Holy angel. Elf hunter, demon hunter. That's seven specializations. Walking deep into the temple, the squad sees an incredible blob of energy. At the same moment, an incredible number of monsters materialized there. Junhin shouted to his comrades that their business was bad, and monsters were attacking. These walking dead are all level 8. Turning around to his co-commanders, the bearded man with the shield shouted to them to prepare for battle. The guy with the two-handed sword asked the level 5 sister to move to the far corner with her spirit beast and try not to die. While the mage and the white tiger stand behind, the rest of the squad members rush to attack. Looking on suspiciously, the worried Han notices that the monsters in Charon's temple used to look like goblins. What happened to them? Could it be that there have been many changes in the game? As he thrusts his spear into the enemy, the red-haired man shouts to his comrades to keep the formation. Suddenly, a high-level monster burst out of the mobs, immediately rushing towards the archer standing nearby. With one swing, he pierced the girl through and through. From such a powerful attack, the archer instantly flew into the opposite wall. Pushing her against the wall, the monster flattened her skull with a single foot strike. The man with the shield can't understand where a level 10 mob came from, they've lost Lee Ken, and considering everything, it's definitely the end for them. How can they stand up to a level 10 monster? They're no match for it. Breaking through the ruin formation of the Doom Squad, the monster immediately pounced on the one who was standing behind everyone. The mage girl doesn't stand a chance. All her comrades have been defeated, and the only thing left for her is death. In the next second, a huge cloud of dust rose at that spot. When it has dissipated, the enemy, looking at his feet for a while, cannot realize where his victim has gone. Turning around, he sees a mysterious silhouette in the fog behind him. It was Han. He took his mistress in his arms and dodged the attack of this high-level monster. When he asked Dawen if she was okay, she said she was fine and thanked him. Looking at Han, the co-commanders can't believe that he being level 5, avoided the deadly strike of a level 10 monster. What speed? And the maneuverability is just worth it. While they were admiring him, the enraged opponent took his strongest form. The landlady asks Zhao Han to be more careful. Activating the bronze experience card, the guy said it would be fine. A young man promises to help a girl find her friend, and he keeps his promise. The bronze experience card was successfully activated. The host's level has been raised to 10th. The master has reached level 10. The appearance of the demon tiger lord is activated. In the very next second, Han grabbed the monster with one paw around its entire head. After a successful activation, he transformed into a demon tiger lord, and all of his characteristics far exceeded the enemy. Watching this, their squad members can't understand what's going on here. He had risen to level 10. They were worried about these two. While they had such a beast beside them. How dare you attack my mistress? Han shouted, landing his strongest blow on his opponent. After this attack, the monster flew into the air, losing half of its hill points. While he was there, the white tiger jumped up, bringing his hand in for a punch, and then immediately struck his opponent in the chest. After such a powerful monster flew all the way to the end of the room, leaving behind a huge trail of destruction and piercing through the stone wall, the co-commanders can't believe their eyes. Maybe they've entered the wrong world. Is this spiritual beast from the world of the strong? Noticing that something shiny had fallen off the slain enemy, Han realized that it was most likely equipment. The boy picked up this small crystal, and the hostess who came up to him remarked that the thing was quite beautiful. At this moment, a status window appeared in front of the young man. This item is referred to as an S-rank stealth stone that allows him to cast an illusion that increases or decreases his level in the eyes of the enemy. After reading its description, Han realized that it was an auxiliary item. While he was examining the thing, Dawen shouts that the monsters are coming. The guy says he'll deal with them himself and asks her to move away. Grabbing the stubborn girl's hand, Junhan pulled her behind him yelling at her to stop standing there and run away. Standing off to the side, 
the troop watches the white tiger fight single-handedly against a crowd of enemies. The man with the shield asks the commander-in-chief if they should help him, this beast is having a hard time, a dumbfounded Junhin says with annoyance that they can't even support him, there are too many monsters, while they were chatting while watching the carnage, Han, who is in the thick of a fierce battle, begins to retreat due to the significant numerical superiority of the enemy, not a moment later, Hundreds of living dead covered the helpless guy in a wave of bones and flesh, but suddenly, from the epicenter of everything that was happening, bright rays of divine light began to burst forth, in the next second, Han burst out of the mountain of living corpses, blowing half of the enemies into small pieces, taking out his sword from behind his back, the guy began to cut the monsters one by one, gaining a hundred experience points for each one, with a few lightning fast attacks. Han chopped down almost all of the opponents, without leaving them a chance. With one final ultimatum strike, the demon tiger lord finished off the remnants of the monsters attacking him. Cool. It's been a long time since I've fought like this. Han shouted contentedly as he stood up in a victory stance. Immediately after the battle ended, the system informed the guy that his level had been upgraded to level 11. After putting his sword into its scabbard. The young man finally realized that only a demon tiger lord could use this blade. He had misunderstood the developer. The system showed him his profile window. In addition to level 11, he had added a new S rank lord skill, tiger descending from the mountain. Stunned looking at Han, the squad leader can't understand what's wrong with this beast. They must have misunderstood something. How could a pet go from level 5 to level 11? Yeah, misunderstood apparently. Dawen ran up to him and noticed that Zhao Han had grown taller again. In addition, there seemed to be an additional active S rank skill. After petting his mistress's cheek, the boy asked in a friendly way if she was alright. Maybe she's scared, confused. The girl shook her head and asked him not to worry. Without telling him, she realized that she just couldn't be afraid when Han was around her. Suddenly, they heard some strange sound. Are there more monsters? In the same second, a bright divine light appeared high above. This light is so bright that it can easily blind you. It is a terrible force, and perhaps a new wave of danger lies ahead for this thinning band. Dear adventurers, here we meet. A mysterious voice spoke imperiously. This woman who appears to them from the depths of the dungeon is the goddess Charon. She tells them that she has been waiting for them here for a thousand years, and congratulates the adventurers on receiving a divine blessing. Charon allows each of them to make a wish. Relaxedly looking at her, the squad members remarked that since she was a goddess, the danger was over. However, Han, who is standing behind him, realizes that Heron Temple has become completely different. The goddess continues to speak, explaining that in order to make a wish, the following rules are necessary. First, you can't make too many wishes. Two, you can't wish for things that will harm this world. And the third rule, it is not allowed to make other wishes that violate the generally accepted norms. Coming out from behind her pet, Dawen apologized and said that she wanted to know where her friend Mo Xiaoya was. Heron said that Mo Xiaoya had become a believer. She is now in a church in Brutch. She asked her not to worry about her friend's safety. Crying with happiness, Dawen is very happy that Xiaoya is really fine. All the other members of the squad had asked the goddess Charon for a set of the best equipment. After confirming that the wish is quite reasonable, the woman informs him that it will be carried out. In the same instant, the guys were given us rank equipment, though they themselves remained at level 8. The man who had been walking around with a long two-handed sword the entire time, shouted happily that he had two new attributes added. Encouraged by what he sees, Han tells the goddess Heron that he too wants to make a wish. The boy wants to become human. The goddess can grant wishes. The overjoyed young man realizes that he can become a full-fledged player again. Closing his eyes, Charon says that desire is being evaluated. After a little thought, the woman pronounces that it will be fulfilled. At the same moment, the process of transforming the white tiger into a human being began. Looking at his hand, Han cried out. That happiness came too suddenly. He was finally a human being, but while he was rejoicing, the goddess Charon began to act strangely. Noticing that he hadn't fully transformed, the guy angrily asked why the woman hadn't returned his past appearance. The system has displayed a warning. The goddess Charon is revising her wishes. Dangerous, very dangerous. 
The woman's eyeballs began to blacken, and blood flowed from there. Karen began to yell hysterically that the wish was too complicated. Everything is about to end. Something supernatural began to happen to the body of the goddess. She started convulsing and screaming. Realizing where this was going, Han worriedly turned to Dawen and shouted to her to be more careful. Without a moment's hesitation, the guy lunged at the girl, trying to protect her from the lightning strike. Pinning her to the ground, the young man asks Dawen if she's hurt. The embarrassed girl looked away and mouthed that she was fine and thanked the guy. Wow, Zhao Han is now human, but he still has his animal ears. As they lay on top of each other, a piercing scream was heard nearby. The goddess thrust her staff through the skull of the man with the two-handed sword. Bleeding, a dying man pleads to be saved. It's bad. What happened to the goddess? What should they do? Activating his fire ability, Junhan shouted to his comrades that they should work together to kill her. Leaping above the height of the indifferent goddess, he swung his spear hoping to stab it into her temple. As he threw the punch, you could read the bravery in his eyes and the confidence in what he was about to do now. But that meant nothing in the face of the all-destroying power of the goddess Charon. The woman slammed the adventurer into the stone floor with a single swing of her hand. Looking under her feet, she saw another helpless opponent and lifted her foot. Upon seeing the enormous foot of the goddess, the doomed man with the beard realized that this was the end. The very next moment he found himself crushed to death by the foot of the goddess Charon. Looking at this horrible monster, Han can't understand how such an unscientific devil could appear in a game like this. Does the game's data change randomly? Who is triggering this? Frightened Dawen takes hold of him and asks the guy to run away quickly. Or else this woman is too scary. Master, it's been a long time since you've had a mission, shouted in Hanu's ear by the awakened error system. The new task is to kill the goddess Charon. The reward is the body of the Lord. During the mission all attributes will double. The duration will be one minute. The time will increase as the level increases. You're awake, Han shouted in surprise, glancing at the system's satisfied window. She answered him that of course she had to wake up at the most dangerous moment for the master and issue him a new task. Saying that the reward for this mission was very generous, the system wished the guy good luck and shut down again. Dumbfounded by this turn of events, the young man, shouting, asked why she left at the most critical moment. What the heck? Noticing that his opponent was attacking, Han pushed his mistress away from him. In the next instant, he put up a block with his hands to try and defend against the divine strike with his huge fist. However, the attack was so strong that the guy flew to the opposite end of the temple and crashed into the stone wall at a tremendous speed. The frightened mage girl glanced excitedly at the young man shrouded in smoke. Having lost quite a few health points, Han Tenseness sits on her knee, realizing that this opponent won't be very easy to defeat. She is too strong, and most likely her level is no less than 25th. Running up to the young man, Dawen immediately started healing him, asking him not to move. She blames herself for being so useless and unable to do anything to help. Looking fearfully at the goddess Heron, Han realizes that if he falls one more time, then he will definitely die. He needs to find a way out by all means. But it was too late to think. The Madden Hedgehog goddess prepared to blow the place to hell. Throwing a glance at the helpless bugs, Heron laughed grimly. As he awaits his almost inevitable death, Han realizes he has no choice but to cheat. While he was thinking about it, the goddess had already delivered her strongest fist strike on them. But the guy seemed to be ready for it already. The very next second, a deafening rumble rang out, sweeping through the entire underground of the Temple of Charon. The goddess's fist stopped right in front of Han's face shattering the atmosphere around him at a furious speed, causing such a rumbling sound. With a fearful glance at his features, the frightened woman can't understand what's going on. Pointing to the level above his head, the guy mockingly shouts to the goddess to keep it up. He actually used the stealth stone to change his data. He didn't think she would fall for that ruse. 120th level Heron shrieked in horror. Realizing how dangerous this man was, she immediately bounced away from him to a safe distance. Thankfully, this was the reaction Han was seeking from her. In a panic, retreating back, the goddess suddenly stumbled back. Spraining her ankle, the woman fell to the ground with a loud smack. At the same moment, the young man activated his newly acquired S-rank ability. Heading towards her, 
Han notices that she is under stress, and therefore it is safe to attack. S rank skill, a tiger coming down from the mountain, looks like you were caught off guard, the guy shouted confidently, piercing the goddess Charon through and through. When he landed on the other side, his level immediately changed back to level 11, turning back to Han. The goddess can't understand what just happened. He's level 11. How could she make such a mistake? Abruptly turning around, the guy gave her a thumbs up and remarked that it looked like the 120th level illusion only lasted for two minutes. But it was enough. Farewell goddess Charon, muttered the young man as his illusory tigers tore the woman apart. After that, a devastating explosion rang out, completely destroying the goddess. When she died, a small crystal fell from her again. Concernedly running up to the guy, Dawin wonders from the guy if he's okay. Joyfully hugging the surprised Han, the girl exhaled a sigh of relief and said that she almost died of fright. Patting her head, the guy can't understand what's gotten into her. I mean, there's nothing wrong with him. The system informs the young man that a rare item called a wishing stone has been obtained. Turning around to the small thing lying on the floor, the guy asked the error system what kind of stone it was. She congratulates the host once again, remarking that he was very lucky to be able to get the wishing stone. When Han asked the system what the advantage of this item was, she explained that there were a total of nine wish stones. If he could get all of them, he could make his wish and finally become human. The boy wonders if it would then even be possible to summon a dragon. The system with the herd replies that you can't. Looking at this incomprehensible thing, the guy asks where the other stones are since there are only eight of them. The error system suggests that it might be possible to find other stones in the city of Brutch, and advises the young man to go there. But before he goes there, she decides to distribute the rewards. Immediately after these words, rainbow-colored liquid began to flow out of the error window. Han, dumbfounded by this, asked if it could be done in a less disgusting way. Plugging his nose in disgust, the guy hands over the wish stone to the system grudgingly saying that by doing so, the system has ruined the whole experience for him. She apologized to the host, explaining that until she fully woke up, the method of distributing the rewards would be just that. Isn't that exciting? What a horror. Of course not, shouted the young man indignantly, taking the map from there. This thing is called a lord's body. All attributes are doubled for one minute. As you level up, the time will increase. Minimum requirement. Level 15. Luckily, nothing was damaged while Han was pulling it out of the sludge. He decides to hide the map so he won't lose it. Walking up to him, Dawin reminds the guy that everyone is dead. She wonders from him what they will do next. Looking at her, the young man recalls that the goddess Charon said her friend was in the city of Brutch. Why don't they go there? He has some things to do there too. Grabbing his hand, the enthusiastic girl led him toward the temple exit. A few hours later, the town of Brutch, Two bravo knights, to the delighted cheers of the audience, prepare to begin the battle in the arena. Two girls sitting in the bleachers yell and love that cars is the best. A happy Dawin is surprised to see that bruh is very lively. Plus, you can watch the fights. Hey, are you new here? Came an unfamiliar voice from nearby. A man standing nearby explains that this is not a demonstration, but a competition for the right to learn. Very soon. The land of the gods will also be opened, and only 30 people will be able to enter. That is what the competition is for. Looking lovingly at one of the contestants, he said that Mr. Cars had already defeated 11 people. He was about to take the first place. A real hero. Han is very excited by what he's heard. Interesting. The land of the gods is an extremely rare terrain map. He's never played it. At this moment, the system alerts the guy that the Land of Gods is related to the Tsar clan. The second wish stone can be located in the Land of Gods. When Karsu has destroyed another enemy, a worried Dawin suggests that the young man leave the place. She feels that something is wrong here. Taking her by the waist, Han asks the girl to enter the competition. Stammering, she fearfully refuses, explaining that she won't have the courage and won't be able to. After starting to suck up to her from all sides and meow, the guy says she's the best and asks her to grant his wish. All he has to do is sign up, everything else she can grant him. In the end, the girl reluctantly agreed. The delighted Han will now be able to enter the competition and get his pebble. Approaching the crowd of people, Dawin, embarrassed, 
says that she would like to participate and asks where to register here. Noticing the newcomers, the adventurers don't understand how a low-level adventurer could even have the guts to come here. From behind, the judge of the competition, a member of the Zur clan, approached them after saying hello. The man in the robe explains that they can easily participate in their competition. They only need to choose an opponent they want to challenge. If they win the competition, the loser above will be out and the winner will take his place. There are 46 contestants here, so these two can challenge anyone. Without letting Dowen say anything, Han says that he will choose an opponent on behalf of the mistress. When he called out the name of his future opponent, the pink-haired girl standing next to him was petrified. I want to challenge cars, said the young man confidently, pointing to the man in the arena. The people who heard this started laughing at him. This mage's pet must have a problem with his head, otherwise why would he choose to challenge cars who knows no defeat? A level 5 mage and a level 3 pet. A perfect combination. Han once again used that inexhaustible stealth stone. Fortunately, they didn't suspect anything. If Cars loses, Dawin will become the leader, and they will secure their place in the land of the gods. The lad immediately takes off, and flying over the heads of the spectators, asks to be allowed to fight on behalf of his mistress. With a single leap to the arena, the young man lands in front of the armed Cars, standing confidently in front of his opponent and taunting him with his finger. Han asks the man to attack him. Angry that some wild beast would dare speak to him like that, Cars assumed a fighting stance. The infuriated onlookers shout at the knight to kill this spiritual beast and show him his full power. At the same second, Cars snapped out of his seat, applying the C-rank skill, Assault Knight. Swinging his sword, the man had already prepared to stab this insolent boy. A level 3 spearhead can't defeat me, enragedly shouted his opponent jumping out and pointing his spear blade at the young man, Han himself, however, spread his hands, carelessly noting that Cars was moving rather slowly. I'd already forgotten I even had an opponent in front of me. The boy said mockingly, kicking the man in the groin. Shit. Did the brute see through his ruse? Leaping away from the young man to a safe distance, Cars stuck his spear into the ground, holding on to Jingle Balls dumbfounded in pain. The opponent quietly says that this is impossible, and it's some kind of mistake. Did Mr. Cars lose? Are you kidding? He's level 8. How can he lose to a level 3 spirit beast? Maybe Mr. Cars is just playing with him. Pulling the spear out of the ground and immediately pouncing on Han, the infuriated opponent shouted that the guy wouldn't have any more luck. I won't make a single mistake again, shouted the man, activating the C rank skill, Shadow Junction. Looking at him contentedly, Han remarks that this attack is pretty good, and it has piqued his interest. In the next instant, there was a loud rumble in the arena, and a huge cloud of dust rose up, blocking the view of the battle from the spectators. There's no way Zhao Han will lose. Ha ha ha. Defeat after spiritual beast. This scum dared to challenge Karsu Sen himself, and now he'll get what he deserves. Is this really the true strength of Mr. Cars? Scary. In the smoke the silhouette of a creature holding an opponent in one hand begins to appear. When what was happening opened before the eyes of the spectators, they saw the spirit beast lifting the undefeated champion by the scruff of his neck. Ladies and gentlemen, I've won, Han shouted, looking slyly at the people around him. Throwing his opponent out of the arena, the guy said the man's place was now his. Damn it Kar-san lost to a level 3 spirit beast. What a horror. When Han returned to Daz Huang with a single leap, the judge of the competition congratulated his mistress for entering the land of the gods. However, before the places were distributed, he asked the two of them to follow him, while the eerily smiling man walks with his back to them. The joyful girl with her spirit beast follows behind him. A couple minutes later, they found themselves at a huge wooden gate. When the doors opened they entered a room that looked very much like a church. The man in the robe explained that it was located here. Das Huang admiringly remarked that it was very beautiful. Turning to her, the man said that he had done his job, and it was time for him to return to his duties. He asked the guests to wait here, peering at the majestic statue of some hero. Han asks the system if it is possible to locate the wishing stone. In response, she explains that she can only sense its presence, but she won't be able to know its exact location, alas. 
At that moment, the guy heard a scream behind him. An indignant woman yells at someone, accusing them of staring at her breasts. The white-haired adventuress yells angrily at the people around her. A mustachioed man asks her to calm down, saying they did nothing of the sort. Perhaps there is something wrong with the lady's eyesight. The exasperated woman grabbed the stout man by the scruff of the neck and lifted him above the ground, while his dumbfounded comrades looked on. The next second she threw the dude at the mustachioed man, pinning them both against the wall opposite, breaking through the stone wall. The two men fell unconscious nearby. This girl is Mo Xiaoya, a 10th level holy angel. Turning around, she noticed Dawan happily calling out to her. The overjoyed girls grabbed on and started jumping on the spot with happiness. They missed each other so much. So that golden-haired woman is Dawan's friend. She has even more than the hostess. Noticing some guy staring at her watermelons, Xiaoya cast a creepy look at him. She asked her friend to wait here. She's got a little business to take care of. There's one more pervert left. Snapping out of her seat, the girl jumped up and pounced on Han, bringing her hand up for a punch. Noticing the woman flying at him, the guy immediately tried to block her attack with his hands. However, the enraged Xiaoya slammed into him with such force that the young man flew several meters away from his original location. As he landed, the guy fell to the wooden floor of the church with a clatter, swinging her leg to make a killing blow. The girl asks her friend to wait a bit. Now they'll catch up. Only she has to deal with the perverts. When her foot came close to Han's face, Dawan asked her to wait a bit and not to hit this young man. After staring hatefully at the Xiaoya staring at him, the guy saw something magnificent in front of him, causing blood to spurt from his nose in a dense stream. The surprised priestess asks the pink-haired girl if she knows this dude. Running up to her, Dawan clarifies that her friend got it all wrong. This is her spirit animal. He's not a pervert. It's true, meow, Han said, making a cute face at the woman. Without stopping meowing, the guy shows her his animal ears. Stroking him, the realization aware Xiaoyo apologizes to the young man. Nothing, meow, the boy replied to her, nuzzling against her bunions. Turns out this girl is very gullible. He likes it that way, haha. <laughs> at that moment, the church bells rang out. This means that the competition is over. Calling her friend after her. The girl said that it was time for them to go. If Dawan was allowed to enter the waiting room, she must have been the winner, right? The competition is over, and Xiaoya is leading the team with which these two will go to the land of the gods. Wow, that's it. Mistress Hanya cheerfully muttered. Flying a flying ship is the only way to reach the lands of the gods. While on this ship with his companions, Xiaoya explains to them that very soon they will see the gate of the void which is believed to be a passage to the land of the gods. The delighted adventurers standing nearby tell me that they've heard it's quite an impressive sight. Han, looking ahead, agrees with them. The lands of the gods are very exciting. The approach to this huge golden gate looks really spectacular. Suddenly there was thunder and lightning in the sky. Shit, it's a void storm. High in the sky above the ship there was a bright flash. A multitude of lightning bolts struck the deck, killing several of the occupants. The entire ship erupts in ear-splitting pleas for help and death screams. This is bad, they've hit the center. Damn, that's scary. Cradling the girls to herself, Han asks them not to worry, everything will be fine. However, this was no ordinary thunderstorm. The matter in space at that moment was actually a huge portal. In the next instant, the portal spit the three of them out onto the roof of some medieval building, breaking through the ceiling. They fell to the floor of the second floor of this structure together. While a worried Dawan asks Han if he's okay, Xiaoya remarks that her friend's pet is very useful. Thanks to him, they are alive, but before they knew it, someone else had landed behind them. It's a high-level monster with an incredibly intimidating aura. Without giving them a second thought, he immediately swung his sword, preparing to chop them into small pieces. At this moment, someone pushes away, not realizing what's going on, Dawan. Grabbing the monster by the hand in which it held the sword, Han shouted for his mistress to get behind him. After saying that, he made a sharp U-turn on the spot. The young man, in one lightning-fast movement, smacked his opponent in the face with a swing. From such a forceful blow, the monster was on the opposite end of the room in the same second. When the fight is over, behind him Han notices a strange box he accidentally damaged during the fight. 
Hearing a strange sound coming from the box, the guy turned around in surprise. Sparkling electricity is seen coming out of the box. What is that? Taking a seat nearby. The young man remarks that this is very strange. Could it be because the equipment has malfunctioned? Xiaoya grasped his shoulder and explained that the land of the gods was a strange place. And it was best not to touch anything. Without listening to her, Han stuck his hand inside the box, not understanding what the girl was afraid of. It's just a pile of boxes. The concerned woman remarks that it is unlikely that anything of value is in there. At the same instant the guy touched the box, a high voltage current hit them. Due to the instantaneous muscle contraction, the two pressed against each other and began to convulse. Too bad, there was lightning in this box and they got electrocuted. Standing behind her, Dawen used purification magic. Xiaoya was immediately thrown a short distance away from the guy. After a while, the two are already lying on opposite sides of the electrified box. When Han, Holding his head, pulled himself up, Dawen worriedly said that it was close, and they were almost electrocuted. What the hell kind of place is this? How can lightning be put in boxes? Checking her health points, Xiaoya reminds herself that she's already said that the land of the gods has its oddities. You'll have to get used to it. Looking sternly at the startled Han, the girl says that luckily there's no need to change clothes. Otherwise, they would have just had to take them off. Pointing to a door nearby, Dawen informed them that she had most likely found a way out of here. Grabbing the girl's hands, Han led them behind him, telling them that they should go and see. He had come to the lands of the gods for the wishing stone, so they should be the first to get there. Once outside, they noticed they were in an arena. Looking around, they can't figure out what this place is, a place for fighting. At the very top of this magnificent structure sits the leader of the 13th level sheep, quite taken aback that three people have come to visit them today. Brothers, attack! He shouted, giving orders to his subordinates. One of the mobs pounced on Xiaoya and yelled at the girl, saying that beasts would never become slaves. Taking out her two-handed sword, the girl blocked his powerful strike without even moving and letting her divine wings loose. Get away! She shouted, kicking the monster's ass and sending it flying. Snapping out of her seat, Xiaoya asks Dawen and her spirit beast to stay here, while she herself flies to the boss. Han remarks that the hostess's friend is quite brave. Putting her sword in front of her, the priestess uses the C rank skill, Divine Strike. Dodging her attack, the sheep leader angrily asked the woman how dare she use her blade against his people. You can't do that in front of me, he shouted and kicked the girl in return. From such a powerful attack, Xiaoya flew back to her friends, rolling backwards on the ground for several meters, without giving them a second thought. The leader of the sheep immediately pounced on the adventurers. Xiaoya asks her friend to run away. This boss is too strong and they can't handle him. Concerned Dawen says she won't leave the girl. Unfortunately, you will all stay here forever. The monster eerily muttered, swinging his sword. What can they do? They don't even stand a chance against this monster. But it didn't seem to be that bad. Han stopped the high-level opponent's attack by simply grabbing the blade of his sword with his fingers. Impossible. Stopped my blow with one hand, yelled the stun sheep leader, looking at the lad in horror, clenching his fist. Han pointed out that one couldn't even trim one's fingernails with such a knife. The next second, the monster flew away from the young man's powerful blow, destroying everything in its path. How come? The guy is only level 3, but he couldn't stand up to his strike without a problem. Pointing at Han, a surprised Xiaoya asks her friend where she dug up such an incredible spiritual beast. He's so cool. A bewildered Dawen replies that it just kind of came out on its own. The boss is level 13, Xiaoya has level 10, but she couldn't even land a hit on him. Han is level 11, and luckily, he has that Lord Body card that increases the performance of all attributes. He can challenge this monster. If they kill him, maybe they can move on. In that case, the guy decides to deal with him quickly with his unique S rank skill. The will of the leader of the sheep is suppressed before the authority and power of this young man. The monster doesn't even know what he can think of to survive, but the truth is, he has an idea. Suddenly, the leader of the sheep fell to his knees. Have mercy, don't kill me. He cried out in tears, bowing his horns into the ground. Stopping in front of him, Han tries to realize what's going on. 
The leader of the sheep, looking up, explains that his clan has lived here for generations. They have been punished and humiliated on a daily basis. What do these people want with them? Looking at him perplexed, the boy still couldn't understand what his opponent was talking about. Bursting into tears, the monster yells at the young man not to pretend. He knows this boy is in league with them. They've burned, killed, captured, but he's done nothing wrong. He just wanted to show that his people are ready to resist. He didn't think they'd lose in the end. Shit. He looks so pathetic that it's hard to even finish him off. Han thought with shame as he looked at the chieftain. Hearing a strange sound, the beast shouted that it was very bad. Those people are here again. Who is it that he fears so much? In the distance, a small squad of men appeared, entering the arena. The doors opened and silhouettes of unknown people began to emerge from them. As they get closer, the strangers can't understand where the new faces came from. Without dwelling on it, the squad decides to get down to business. It's been quite a while and it's time to collect the tribute. So these are the people the boss is so afraid of. What are they going to do? Taste the lamb. At the same second, one of the members of the punishment squad pounced on the sheep, beginning to tear its fur off with his hands. The efficiency of curling hair is too low. You don't need that hair, said the pumped up man, laughing creepily. Shit, they're fucking perverts. Looking at these people, Xiaoya noticed that it felt as if their eyes were burning. After collecting the woolen baskets, the workers said it was enough and they would come again later. All of this is high quality raw material. So we need to hurry up and send it out as soon as possible. Hey, they can go to the Animal Protection Association and sue you. Han said indignantly to those perverts. Walking up to him and kneading his hand, a guy with curly hair asked who this young man was. The affairs of their F4 wool factory are under the wing of the government. While Han stares at him incomprehensibly, Xiaoya, hitting her fist on her palm, remembered something. These people standing in front of them are the four gods. Rain, thunder, wind and electricity in the land of the gods. F4 wool factory. Standing between them, the girl awkwardly said that there had been a misunderstanding. Approaching one of the workers, she introduced herself to him explaining that she was an attendant of the Zur clan. They had received a letter asking for help, and so they had brought the adventurers here. The surprised man awkwardly remarks that they are just in time. There is a very important task that could use some extra help. Looking at it with delight, Han realized that missions could be issued not only by the system, but also by non-player characters. Maybe he could get a wish stone if he completed the mission. Turning to Dawin, the guy told her to hurry up and complete the task. The girl immediately raised her hand, shouting that she was ready to fulfill their mission. Looking at her contentedly, the employee remarked that the young lady was active and pleasant. A few minutes later, Han and his satisfied mistress irritably tugged at the wool with a needle. Furious, he threw the needle on the table and shouted that he was here to get the wishing stone. He wasn't interested in anything else. Angrily taking his head, the employee explains to him that he works in the meteorological workshop here and is responsible for producing the wind, rain, thunder, clouds and other phenomena that are sent around the world every day. There has been a shortage of supplies lately. If the shipments stop, there will be climate problems, and so the production task is very important. Turning around indifferently, Han said that the lack of goods didn't concern him. He only wanted to find the wishing stone. A man in a business suit, standing nearby, asked him to wait for a while. Holding out some item to him, the man realizes that this is not what the guy was expecting. So he asks to run another errand. This is a more important task. When Han asked what the mission was, the man explained that the goal was to get the transportation team safely to the seaport. After successfully completing the mission, he would receive a mysterious S-rank reward. The young man said the offer sounded tempting, and the man in the suit gave him a map of the route. The team is leaving in two hours. It's not a fact that Han will be able to get the wishing stone, but the S-rank reward is pretty good too. Two hours later, a squad of several men walks leisurely through the forest, scratching the back of his head. Han can't understand why they would accompany these people. They look quite formidable. Glancing at the newcomer, the guy walking in front explains that this shipment of goods is always being watched by looters, and so he'd better be on the lookout. When he asked his partner who the marauders were, he said that they were a group of criminals who often robbed caravans. They had been robbed countless times in the past year and had never been able to deliver the goods. 
it turns out it's not just some horrible guy, it's a whole gang. Ah, there you are. Suddenly heard a woman's voice nearby. This 13th level warrior on a horse is called Sun Wuji. After seeing the caravan, she advised the guards to give her the money and that handsome boy if they value their lives. Who is this young man? The new hire at the weather shop. Ah, what an aroma. I haven't smelled fresh meat in a long time. The girl said contentedly, hugging him, jumping out and drawing his sword to strike. The guy's ally tells him to stay away from this woman. She's a marauder. However, this person did not interest Wuji even a little bit. With one swipe of her palm, the girl gave the man a juicy slap, knocking him away from her. She got off her horse and ordered her soldiers to take all the goods, kill the women, and send the men to her room. Honey, is nothing going to crack? Obeying the order of their commander-in-chief, the marauders immediately rushed towards the caravan. Without much trouble, they dealt with all the guards, immobilizing them with deft swings of their swords. You can't rob people, Dallin shouted as she cast an ice needle and threw it at the nearest enemy. Supporting her, Xiaoya also attacked the enemy, saying that they needed the goods to maintain a normal climate. You can't break the system. Angered Sun Wuji can't understand how these brats dare to resist her. At that moment, someone standing behind her grabbed the girl's shoulder firmly. I forgot to tell you, this shipment of goods is mine, Han said eerily in her ear, preventing her from moving. Then, with one hand motion, the guy threw the girl into a nearby tree, adding that he wasn't going to share her. His mangled partner crawls up to him and asks the young man how he did it. Two warriors from the marauding squad, seeing how this guy treats Wuji, decided to avenge their sister. However, before they could do anything, Han immediately drew his sword from its sheath. Running a small combo of attacks, the young man slashed at his opponents, throwing them off their horses. But there's something wrong with these girls. Why do they get high off his blows? Are they masochistic? While the dumbfounded Han was looking at the two, a voice was heard high in the sky. Nice kick, pretty boy, yelled the distraught Wuji jumping out above the guy's head, preparing to use her special ability. While in the air, the woman used her fingers like a gun and aimed a discharge of unknown energy directly at Han. Damn, that's spectacular. The boy shouted, dodging fearfully. As he jumped back to a safe distance, a huge heart-shaped explosion formed where the projectile had hit. The epicenter became hot. Hot breath began to glide pleasantly over my body. Awesome. What a great ability. Luckily Han wasn't caught, otherwise, it would have looked something like this. Ah, like a butterfly in a cocoon. While the horny boy was watching with passion, Wuji, who was attacking from behind, noticed that the young man's agility might be impressive, but his vigilance was not weak. She underestimated him, though, the guy turned around and grabbed her wrist. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to take that back. You're the only weakling here. Han spoke, Looking at the surprised woman slyly, in the next instant, he struck a lightning fast blow to his opponent's liver. There's something wrong with this girl. Why does she like it? What amazing power. It's been a long time since I've had such pleasure. Wuji suddenly marveled, grabbing the guy's shoulders. The girl said she wanted more. The dumbfounded Han can't understand where so many perverts came from, explaining that he had never encountered such a strange request. The young man grabbed the girl and threw her over his shoulder. As he pinned the pervert to the ground, he grabbed her by the neck and swung his fist. Immediately after that, Han began to deliver blow after blow, beating the buzzed girl with all his might. What a wonderful man, I love it. Wuji sat in bliss, receiving another punch to the face. Lying on the grass, the beaten girl quietly tells the young man that she remembers him. After saying those words, she immediately passed out which marked Han's victory. The jubilant co-commanders couldn't believe that this level 3 spirit beast had defeated a level 13 opponent. Running up to Zhao Han, an overjoyed Xiaoya calls the guy amazing and asks him to teach her his techniques. Das Huang, who also admires him, explains that it's probably a matter of talent. There is no time to waste in learning. Suddenly, a slight wind blew, plucking blades of grass off the ground. It's bad. The weather's getting bad. Keep heading towards your destination. The caravan commander-in-chief advises his comrades to seek shelter before things lead to disaster. We need to send the clouds, wind and rain to the sea as soon as possible. Half an hour later, the squad successfully arrived. Raising his hand, 
the commander ordered the others to place the goods in the container. Each area has its own numeric code. The goods will be automatically picked up as soon as the correct code is entered. Done. With this uncomplicated action, the man started an entire workshop. At the same time, clouds began to form in the sky. Clouds appeared in the sky, and it immediately rained from them. Is this really what the land of the gods is like? Amazing. Zhao Han uttered in excitement. At this moment, loud sounds of swords clashing could be heard within the workshop. Was there really a battle going on in there? Abruptly rushing in that direction, Han shouted that he hadn't received his reward yet. We can't let there be any confusion in the workshop. As they ran up to the scene, they noticed that everything around them was ablaze with bright fire. A mob of people they know with huge fire creatures behind them demand the gods give them the keys to the warehouse, otherwise, they'll just kill them. There's something wrong with these guys. They seem to have drunk so much alcohol that they can't even stand up to low-level players. The man in the suit blamed it on the third man, saying that his head was splitting. The bald dude, holding his stomach, remarks that he needs to go to the restroom. Cut the crap, let's kill them and take the keys, shouted an angry cars leading the squat and drawing his spear forward. Suddenly, the sound of a sword swinging was heard. The man's weapon was suddenly cut in two. Hey cars, this is too much. I haven't picked up my reward yet. Stay out of this. Han pronounced, landing next to him. At the same instant, cars was kicked so hard that blood spurted from his mouth. After this attack, the enemy flew a few meters away, dragging his back on the ground, forgetting about the weakling. The guy pointed the blade of his blade at the others. If you dare to oppose me, I'll kill you. Han said eerily, threatening them with his sword. Lying on his back, Cars can't understand why this spirit beast is also here. Could it be that he too signed a contract with Kulu-san to loot the workshop? No. Mr. Kulu's fire giant will go against him and crush him without a single chance. Mr. Kulu. That name again. Pet the cat. Uh -oh.